How's it going everybody? This is Rob Novacast back with another video for you guys and this one, um, well, we, um, we got some stuff to do and, uh, we're going to be doing a reaction. Lucky me. So without further delay, um, this is another SCP reaction video. Oh joy. Alright, so... This is the last man, as I adjust the volume on my headphones. This is the last man, SCP-2399 CP or SCP animation. So without further delay, as I go full screen, here we go. Hello? Is this thing on? We recording? Okay. <sighs> Honestly, of all the things I thought I'd be doing up here. Well, this is just sad. Also, it's funny as I'm pausing, you guys can see where I like pausing, but you can see the little creature right here. That's funny. That is really, really funny. To whoever you are, whatever you are. Hello, I am the last remaining man. Okay. And on behalf of my species and oh. my planet, I applaud you for staying far away from us until now. We were genuinely awful, at least up until the very end. Nothing like an impending apocalypse to bring a species together. Of course, if they were still around, I know they would love to watch this. Probably. Particularly the O5s. Hey guys, go f yourselves. <laughs> That's probably a good way to freaking you know, you know, call people out. Like, hey, you the guys that probably screwed us over. Okay, yeah, go for yourselves. That's good. You left me here completely alone. Oh, but we're past that. Clearly, I'm gonna use any time I've left to tell my story. Okay, since nobody else will be able to. Let's start at the beginning. All right. I was assigned to Protocol Legionnaire by the O5s about a year ago. At the time, it felt like an honor. But all the training that followed, all the stress and pressure, it was nearly too much to handle. I mean, seriously, you'd think after years at MIT, I'd already be qualified for space missions, but... Okay. Regardless, I was put through six months of training and briefing. Not that it helped clarify anything about this mission. So... One thing I've heard, and I'm sure some people who follow the space program um, can probably val like validate this, but there's something I heard that apparently when it comes to, like, you know, just the just going into space, that puts a lot on your men uh, your just just puts a huge mental strain on you. And I guess in some cases there were, you know, a few of the astronauts that weren't the best <laughs> from what I've heard. Um, but I'm sure somebody will let me know, like, give me more information of, you know, cases like that. But, yeah, it sucks. And I guess, I guess another thing, too, is apparently some people weren't, you know, the best to begin with, but. Here I go, more likely to have this video taken down because I'm shitting on NASA. Again, I've only heard rumors. It's not legit. But whatever. It was completely unbelievable. And it was so highly classified. There was barely anyone I could verify the reports with. Okay. It was a small team. Just Werner and myself. Through every briefing, he was there with me, learning about SCP-2399 and the threat it posed to mankind. Okay. The alien superstructure is capable of causing an SK class barren Earth end of the world event. Due to its remote location and the data we've collected, it has been placed in the Keter containment class and the Amida disruption class. These classifications are not to be taken lightly. Okay. I thought they were a bit heavy handed with that part, but in hindsight, I guess they were dead on. They'd been aware of it for decades, it turns out. They had satellites monitoring it. Hell, this wasn't even their first mission to destroy it. Also, it's, it's really funny that he has the bobblehead in one of the SP, SCPs. 
that just a little quick detail that I figure I bring up. First visual contact was made in 1963, smack dab in the middle of the great red spot on Jupiter. Over the next several decades of monitoring, the O5s got increasingly concerned about it, and for good reason. Okay. The massive mechanical structure was observed to have antimatter-based weaponry, which it was using to create spatial disruptions and atmospheric phenomenon. It was the cause of the Great Red Spot, a storm so large you could fit three Earth-sized planets inside it. That alone was enough cause for worry. But Jeez. then it began receiving transmissions from the depths of space. Another galaxy three million light years from our solar system. Probably from whoever or whatever built it, if it was even made by another entity. For about six years, it received a looping message which, through code breaking and translation efforts, was determined to be a command to repair itself. So it was learned that the SCP was damaged, which came as a relief, but also that it could repair itself autonomously, which was oh, alarming. Oh, right. After that, the O5s pushed this thing up their list of priorities. They built and launched the Barrier Array, which was a series of satellites designed to intercept any further transmissions it might receive from its intergalactic pen pals. Okay. All other information I learned about this thing felt like it was straight out of some science fiction movie. Even in its damaged... By the way, is it just me or is like the image of the the SCP look kind of like the uh, the space jockeys ship from Aliens? I don't know, I just it had the same kind of like shape. Just figured. Date. It seemed to have a limitless power supply, advanced electromagnetic shielding, matter disrupting weaponry, and a precise tracking and targeting system. Okay. It was designed to destroy. And it was indeed repairing itself. It was hypothesized that it impacted Jupiter's moon Io before coming to rest in Jupiter's lower atmosphere. Some of them stayed nearby, and others traveled as far as Jupiter's moons to recover parts that the SCP lost. This led to one of the first violent exchanges with SCP-2399. Barrier Unit 53 observed one of the repair drones closing in on a piece of debris. It was quickly determined to be a part of a damaged communications array. Because of the nature of this specific component, and the ramifications of allowing its recovery, it was ordered that Barrier Unit 45 fire upon the drone with its onboard concussion batteries. Okay. Seconds after that attack, we lost contact with Barrier Unit 45, and a spatial anomaly thought to have originated from the SCP was observed surrounding it. We had to act fast. There was no choice but to terminate Unit 45 using other units in the Barrier Array. It was forbidden to further engage the SCP or any of its drones using the Array from then on. Good lord. Under no circumstances are any barrier units to further engage either SCP-2399 or drones released by SCP-2399. So, unable to destroy any drones or interfere in any other way, we began to prepare for the inevitable prospect of repairs being completed. Switching to a proactive approach wasn't just an option. It was absolutely necessary. Because starting in 1996, the barrier array began intercepting a new repeating message. Unit is out of range of target. Proceed to planet number three in system. The barrier array prevented that message from being received by SCP-2399. In 2015, the message was updated and more urgent. Proceed to planet number three in system. Priority is target. Cease repairs. Oh. If the array was still doing its job, nothing should have happened. But clearly, everything went to hell after that. When the thing just started to rise out of the gases of Jupiter's atmosphere, the O5s activated protocol Legion Air. Werner and I were ushered in as a last resort, the saviors of humanity. We piloted the vehicle of our deliverance to the moon, planning to launch our defense toward the faceless metallic threat. It was a massive EMP, one that they hoped would knock down SCP-2399 shields, accompanied by a volley of nukes big enough to wipe out our entire civilization a thousand times over. There was a little brightness in the world then. When the news went public, people began channeling hope into our program. What other choice did they have? The world watched Legionnaire's first test launch. Jimmy Kimmel made electromagnetic pulse jokes. My nieces and nephews drew crayon pictures of rockets and explosions, arguing about which missile was the best. Who? The Pope led the faithful in prayer in St. Peter's Square. The Lord's angels made metal. It was an end to wars, 
an end to pointless squabbles and petty politics. All the negative energies of mankind turned to purpose, with an outside threat so faceless, so impersonal, that all vitriol and hatred directed towards it became noble. Naturally, this was going to be more successful than their last attempt, Project Gygus. That was almost the exact same thing, except they mounted their attack from orbit around Europa. Okay. Warheads, EMPs, enough resources that it required the combined efforts of 45 countries to create the whole payload. The results of Project Gygus were classified, but clearly it wasn't what I would call a success. If it was, you wouldn't be hearing this message. Yeah, probably not. So, with that presumably failed attempt burning in my mind, I flew to the moon with Werner. He was much more hopeful than myself, ever the optimist, never losing faith in the Foundation. Even when the whole thing went sideways, he told me they had to have a solution. Come on, have you ever known the Foundation to put all their hopes on one single project? They gotta have a silver bullet. One more card up the sleeve. Something. I admired his optimism, but we were supposed to be the silver bullet. The whole payload, which I was deathly afraid of, by the way, was launched at the SCP as it hurtled toward Earth. We had the eyes of the whole world on us. And then suddenly, we didn't anymore. Oh, shit. In the months that followed, he got quieter and quieter. We only spoke when we had our rehydrated meals together. Then, one day, he just left. Which you'd think would be a hard thing to do on the moon, because where is there to go? I remember seeing him walking through the craters, heading toward the horizon. I opened a radio channel. Hey, Wernie? Where, where are you going? But he didn't answer. Didn't stop. Didn't turn around. Didn't even wave goodbye. Honestly, I didn't think he'd be the first one to snap. But he doesn't have to look down on Earth anymore. I had my daily call a little late today. That's what gave me the idea for this video. The cameras still work, amazingly. The sky is a swirling, roaring mass of dust and sulfur, masonry and debris bouncing past like tumbleweeds. The leftovers of the human race. Same old, same old. I might have gone a little mad on the call there. I'm kind of glad nobody was there to hear me on the other end. I started talking to Werner, asking- I gotta say this. This would be kind of like a horrible thing to go through. No you doubt. Come back. And I started telling off the O5s for doing this to me. But all I got was the same automated response I've gotten for months. This is an automated message from Site 19. We have a Category 1 site-wide failure. Contact Alternate Command for orders. Good lord. My family, my dog, my house, they're all gone. I'll never turn on the TV and... And... So you say that Legionnaire worked. It blew up that alien piece of sh And it's not the end of the world anymore. No. It's right out there. A colossal mass of alien machinery is on my screen. Hovering amidst the roiling atmosphere. Covered in scorch marks from a thousand atomic blasts. And I'll have to look at it every day until I die here. Damn. To whoever you are. Whatever you are. I am the last man. And on behalf of my species and my planet, you should have stayed far, far away from us. Dang. That's, uh... Oh, is there still more? Oh, it's just, uh, static, I'm assuming. Man. I gotta say, this one was actually really interesting, or at least the story, anyway. Um, so, all in all, this was actually a really fun, or, again, really fun story to listen to. Um, and it's been intriguing to get in, start, uh, at least start getting into these, as I bummed my friggin' mic, um, where I hear all these stories that people have created when it comes to the quote-unquote SCPs. So... You know, honestly, I'm and I'm thankful for people suggesting them. They this has been, you know, fun so far. All right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Truly appreciate it.
If you guys can, please leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. If you guys want to follow us on social media, links are in the description down below, as well as check out our daily content and the weekly podcast. Also, just so you guys know, new, this is something I forgot to mention, as you guys can see, new background for the video. Um, honestly, this looks really cool um, when, with, you know, the way I have it set up, so uh, hopefully you guys like it too. Um, and with that, this is Rob Novacast signing off. Have a good one and take care. Peace.